I noticed that this is um, Tahuti. It says a polychrome limestone relief fragment of the 19th, 19th and 20th, 20th dynasty, dynasty of 1292 to 1075 BC, carved in sunk relief and brightly painted with the abyss headed god Thor, the patron of scribes, enthroned and holding a wise scepter, a floral garland, a left and wearing a pleated kilt. This is the wise scepter right here. Okay, a floral garland, that's on the left, which is right here. What else? The wasp. A pleated kilt. Oh, they're saying that's a kilt. Right. And then um, with the bull's tail and the boar. Oh, wow. And then the boar's. Where am I at? A boar collar and then the tripartite wing. What they look like. Okay. A tripartite wig and the active crown and ram's horn, fury and sun disc. The panel of inscribed reading the Lord of Divine Words and the Scribe of Truth, the Divine Company. The ram's horn is, is even though this is Tahuti with the ibis head, or um, ibis bird head, um, also got the ram head um, on top, on top of the crown, which symbolizes, of course, um, Amen. And being that as the sun here in the center, Amen Ra. Right? And then you have the Uraeus, which are the producers of the two Uraeus, which symbolizes the activation of the two base nerves as it raises up from the spinal column. As it said, you got that tail here. What kind of tail was that that it said? It said it was a bull's tail. A bull tail. Now, the bull's tail, that's the, that is um, Osiris or Ampis. Right? So, actually, this Tahuti symbol symbolizes Apis, which is Osiris, as well as also Amen-Ra at the same time. So mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's some serious um, connections. Symbolism. With symbolism with this. Mm -hmm. And no, it's not like, um, no, it's not like what uh, Zachariah Central said, that he was um, so-called um, chimerons or half man beasts and all this other stuff that they now use in, in order to um, promote into their futuristic mindset of clothing. Now this is, um, it says a polychrome of the top of Cyrus. Right, so it's polychrome, all right, as they call it. And of course, this is a statue of Osiris. Uh, got the Amen Ra horns at the top, so with the plumes. These plumes is where we get the origin of the story of Moses and the Ten Commandments coming down on the two tablets. The tablets are these plumes. Okay, this is this is the owl, which is Mu. This is the owl, a uh, Mu. All right. This is actually the image or symbol of Mu. All right. If it had the mouth of Ra here, which looks like an oval, um, you would have the word Mu, M R. So this is M for Mu or Mu. So from the third dynastic period, oh word! Now this, this goes is a back. sunstone mummy mask. <clears throat> now this is the third dynastic period. Now, now this is during the time. Oh no! It says third immediate period. All right, dynastic period would be actually twenty one to twenty five. Look like they used dirt down in there. They covered it. Bass. Yeah, that's what it says. Sandstone. You know, they didn't know, like they always do. It says sandstone. Mm hmm Limestone figure of the lion-headed goddess, Sekhmet. Right, this is Sekhmet. 
716 to 30 BC. Okay. <laughs> All right, now this is during the time of the plot of the Ptolemy, right, head of the royal sphinx. Well, the royal sphinx then looks like this because this is a European, and this is during the time of the Ptolemy as they came in and plundered Egypt during the three, after 332 um, BC. And as you see, it says 304 to 30 BC. So this is the time when the Europeans began to um, rule um, Egypt. You can see it look like he's slender in the face. He looks more Europe centric. Right. Now this right here, of course, is a coffin. It says Ankh um, Tikalok. A Tikalok. Because they're going to take a lot of your yeah, stuff. Yeah. <laughs> 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 or they have taken a lot of our stuff, as you see. All right, so um, obviously it looks like he had a beard underneath the chin here, and um, they took that beard off for whatever reason. It must have been cracked or something. And it also looks like they, they tried to fix the nose. Right, well, mm, anyway. You see it from the side. Yeah. As you see, the vulture um, is on, um, the course, the vulture deals with the dead, so you see the vulture right here, and the Uraeus and the sun sign on top there, and the vulture is now taking them into um, the next um, afterlife, afterworld. Um, of course, uh, we know that Tahuti is there waiting, and another form of Apu or Ampu, which is Apu, um, um, Anubis, right all right, point is I'm um, now using the images and seeing where she's filling it at. That's what, that was the problem with the liver. Yeah, he had an like. issue with the liver. All right, so this individual here, um, obviously died of... Or his healing mind. Or he either died of liver issues. All right? All right. And this is during the period of 22 to 23 dynasty. The 22nd dynasty. and 23rd dynasty. Right, which is 944 to 732 BC. All right. All right, so now you have the Egyptian granite bust of an official new kingdom dynasty or dynastic period. Of, 18th dynasty. Right, the 18th dynasty. So this is during the time of Ankh-Aten, uh, Ankh uh, Ankh-Aten. Akhenaten, as he's also referred to as Amenhotep the um, the fourth, um, and Heshepsut, um, Thutmose the third, all of them uh, ruled during the eighteenth dynastic period. So it was during this time period. But he had some thick hair. Oh yeah, that um, noted that that is actually here. That was um, what we refer to now as braids or locks. All right, now we've all seen this um, Egyptian sandstone relief here. It was also during the um, 18th dynastic period, and as you see, during the reign of Akhenaten, 1353 to 1335 BC. That's a sister. Right, that's a sister um, right there. And on the relief in which I've actually seen, um, she has locks, right? It's not as detailed here. Right, we have the Egyptian painting of the limestone relief during the um, New Kingdom. This is during Ramesses' um, period of um, um, dynasty. This is during the 19th, 19th and, the and the 20th, 20th. Um, dynastic period. So 1307 to 1070 BC. Ooh, drama, them babies. Intelligent. Them kids. Huge. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go with some lots of grays once again. <clears throat> All right, my brother and his. You like some brothers here because they got the beards, as you see, um, at the bottom of the chins. And of course, this is during the time of the 19th and 20th dynastic period, 1550 to 1070 BC, also. You can see anything that I'm doing right now? Yeah. Okay. okay, now this is um, this is nice. I also seen this before. 
Um, this is a sandstone relief of the fragments late period of 71630 BC. Um, as you see, um, let's look at the figures. All right, this is what looks like. Got it. Yeah. Okay. This looks like a symbol of of Tahuti. All right. This is like a Why baboon. Why you say that? Oh, okay. All right, and has the sun, or as we say, the crescent moon, um, and sun, as you see here, same as symbolized here on Apis, which is the bull once again with the sun, which is a form of Osar, or Osiris. And as you see here, um, have the double wings of protection, all know? right? And it looks like it's the symbol of the Ankh, um, somewhat here in the center, all right? See that? Um, That's the okay. Om symbol. The Om symbol, so she, or she, which would be um, spirit, symbolic to the protection of the spirit. That's what this symbolizes, the protection of the spirit. And as you see, um, that is a basically the Ba symbol, um, which symbolizes the soul. So the spiritual soul is what that would be symbolic to there. All right, this is um, during the 19th and 20th dynastic period, um, 1307 to 1070 BC. This is an Egyptian painted limestone relief during the so-called New Kingdom. All right. Always amazes me how they love putting in um, the image. Always sells for fifteen. Th that's it. No, that's not it. Well, I'm about to say um, only one thousand five hundred and eighty-four dollars. <laughs> right. That's it. Right. Right. All right. So um, here's another one. Um, just like Segmite there is putting the hands on or saw um, as he rules. It doesn't say what kingdom or dynastic <laughs> period that this is. Um, it just has a... It looks more ancient too. Though. Right, it does. So we don't have any details on this particularly right now. All right? Right. You see the glyphs, of course. So water? This is water, right? Ooh. Earth. Symbolizes the magnetic um, properties, life. All right, causes the unk symbols. And that's what she's doing. Look like she's doing right. Her. So, so this is a healing. Um, look like a healing uh, relief that is going on here, based on um, the hieroglyphics. And look, he's sitting on his square. Both of them, as you see. Okay. That's standing, well, in his case, we say standing on the square, but in his case, he's sitting on the square, all right, as you see, all right? Oh, no, got to get the help. All right, Egyptian granite uh, funer funerary uh, portrait of couple. This is during the 19th, 20th dynastic period. As you see, they have locks and braids. Um, image here is very... Um, beautiful, uh, the divine couple, as it is called, um, together here. All right. I'm coming in the image of Osar and Osset. And I don't know why they put and, that in here. And um, on the side of as you see, uh, this looks like it was. This didn't make it in one piece. Looked like it was once a um, during the third. Might be. I don't know how old it is because it doesn't have an actual date for it. But it looked like it was like probably the image of Imhotep, which I've seen before, in which that he sat on his square or throne, as they say. But here we have the actual picture of right here. It looks like it like the goddesses, right? Healing like each other on this side here. The goddesses. Um, doing the ka, which means the spirit, as you see, both hands, hand thrown up, dominant hand, the right hand. So, yes, definitely looks like um, a healing session is going on here.
right? We have some more high glyphs. Um, like sun, the water, the, uh, some birds. Right. Yeah, this bird, so hopefully it can be seen. Okay, and they, this time they're not holding up the car symbol. Now She's look, receiving. It looks more like they're receiving energy this time. And as you see, look at the pyramids or cones at the top of the head symbolizes now the activation of the pineal gland. That's what that symbolizes there. The activation oh, of, the right there. of the pineal glands. That's the lotus plant in which that symbolizes the activation of the, of the 1,000 petals at the crown. And then on top, look, you see here, um, actual, the actual... Pine cones, which is similar to the pine pineal gland or the pyramid, as you see there on top of the head. Which they didn't have on the other which side. Which they do not she have, did on, the have other on the other side. But they didn't. Right. So now she gave them the energy in order to activate their um, kundalini wow. and their pineal gland, as you see here. Mm -hmm. As she receives the energy now, and on the other side, it was transmitting energy to one another, All right? Our ancient folks have some serious science here. As you see, now you see an image of a man. Hieroglyphs are kind of hard to read, but one looks like a cross right there. Of course, that's not actually a cross. That would be somebody to the four directions, mm -hmm. north, south, east, and west, or news. North, east, west, and south. That's why they say bring the good news. All right? And you see also on this side, that was the male. On this side is the female. So it's telling you the left side is the feminine. The right side is the masculine. All right? Mm -hmm. Side of the body. That's what that is telling you right there. All right? All right, so we're going to show this relief here again. This is a limestone relief from the 1920th dynastic period, um, 1292 to 1075 B.C., all right? Now, um, has everything that we talked about earlier. Um, I wanted to redo it. Cause right, this is the Lord of the Divine Word. That's the scribe of truth of the divine company. Um, who's the scribe? The scribe is... Um, Tahuti, Netur Tahuti. And so of course, Tahuti here has a tail, uh, which is the bull's tail, which is the tail of Osiris or Osar. All right, so he's backed by the power of Osar. That's what that's symbolic to. And Tahuti himself symbolizes wisdom. All right, and that wisdom raises up within us through the back and power of Osar. All right. Um, to Amen Ra, symbolic to Amen is the horns, because the ram's horn symbolic to Amen, and then the sun is Ra, and then of course they have the plumes and the crowns, as well as also um, the rays, as you see. All right, so he's showing you um, all of that at the same time. All right, what's called the Ati um, crown, that's what this is right here. All right, Ati's crown. You see anything with the creep? Gotcha. Seraphis. What? Uh oh. Mm -hmm. All right. Now we get ready to go see. <laughs> we get ready to go see where it all started at. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we get ready to go and see where it all started. We're gonna work our way back around. But first, we're gonna find. The individual known as Serapis. Oh, here go Zeus himself. This is Serapis, y'all. This is where the story of Jesus comes from. During 325 AD, Constantine with 319, well, one gas communicated, called Arian. 
Arius, and 318 bishops decided to add into the biblical aspects of what we now know today. This is Serapis. Look as you see. Roman marble head of the god Serapis, second century AD. All right, second century AD. So this is where the image, as you see, obviously of Zeus, but also of Jesus originated from Ja Zeus, and they have it right here. All right, and we definitely wanted we definitely wanted to get this um, to you for you can see um, what's going on. This is made of granite, marble, you know. So we got y'all with that. Oh. All right. Right. Now this is a Syrian limestone. Let me pull this back some. This is a Syrian limestone. But look what is in his left hand. His, in his left hand is a pine cone. So notice that every time they have a pine cone, it's symbolic to the enlightenment of the pineal gland, which is in the sense of the brain. See, all this information became obsolete or became hidden um, to us. Um, due to so-called um, slavery and indoctrination of mind control um, tactics. But the ancient world knew, all the people knew, that this was what you're supposed to be striving towards, was true enlightenment. And many didn't make it, but it's supposed to have been something which they'd be all supposed to have been striving towards. And so that pine cone symbolizes the activation of the pineal gland. Right, that's the limestone, that's a funerary um, still from Syria during the second century AD, during the same time in which that, that Serapis is being formed, you have here um, a image of what it looks like very similar to an Egyptian uh, relief, but this is from Syria, this is actually the Roman Imperial. So as you've seen, as you've seen, all right, as you've seen with the um, Serapis head, that was also uh, Roman influence, all right? That was Zeus, as we saw um, earlier, all right, with the Serapis. That's where the Jesus came from as far as the Greek, um, Greco-Latin interpretation of the name. But, of course, we know Yahshua's um, name in Hebrew was Yahshua. Jesus' name in Hebrew was Yahshua. All right, and of course, that goes back to ancient Egypt, who was the guy Shu, who was the personification of air. Well, that's because look at them locks, right? Look at them locks, right? They look ethnic, too. Yeah, right. This is the marble or sarcophagus panel of the Roman Imperial, late third century AD, and as my wife just pointed out, um, the individuals who was protecting, who was protecting the so-called royal line um, was us, as you can tell from the, um, here, from the locks um, right here. Um, of course, the hair looked different, much different than this individual here, who looked basically European, and this individual here. Right, look different than here looks much different. So as you see, look at the hair once again. All right? Have these locks or uh, twists, hair twists right there.
is what's called Bell Crater, 350 to 330 BC. Wow. Right? Okay, this is from during the time. This is during the time uh, right after 325 AD, after the passing of the Const Constantine, um, what we refer to now as the Nicene Council. The Nicene Council formed in 325 AD with the 318 bishops. And as you see, um, this is during that time period, um, less than five years afterwards or so, that they began to emulate um, the ancient worlds of Egypt and different other, um, with the pottery and different other um, documents of um, artistry, I should say. So right here, you see the goose. The goose within ancient Kemet would be the um, what is called Naga. All right, the goose would be Naga. This is where you get the um, the goose that laid the golden egg from, um, the storyline. Um, another word for Naga within the um, ancient Kemetic would be Geb. Geb was known as um, the messenger of the gods. All right, and he was the earth ruler, or earth deity, or nature. Um, that's who Geb was. So one of his symbols was that of a goose. All right, this is where we get Jesus is the carpenter from, because his father was supposed to be Gab or Gabriel, and hence Jesus was the carpenter, and his name, the word carpenter or builder within Hebrew is Nagar also. And of course, of course, it tells you, um, please do not touch sculptures, but we done went way past that. <laughs> right, this is um, Mithras, um, son of Annas, um, during the third century AD. This is also one of the, um, if you ever read the 16 Crucified Saviors by Kersey Graves, um, this is uh, one of, this is one of the, thir this is one of the 16 Crucified Saviors, in which that the mythology of who we now refer to as Serapis or Jesus is based on, is Mithras. Once again, here, here we all started from. <laughs> all right, this is your Zeus, this is your Jesus, this is your Jupiter, this is every individual in which that now comes to be known as your savior. All right, so this is Zeus, and look who Zeus' symbols are. It's the rams. Look at Zeus' symbol. Now, in the, in the original mythology of Zeus, Zeus came from out of Ethiopia, which would be Africa, Abyssinia. So look at that nose. That nose look kind of wide, kind of flat. That's all I can say, right? But as you see, we're looking at the rams, and of course the ram symbolizes Amen. All right, Amen, Amen Ra. So we know that Zeus' character was based on Amen, Amen Ra. Hence, Zeus' character becomes the same as Serapis as we've seen earlier. All right. Now this is a Roman uh, marble sarcophagus fragment but notice that's a sister all right all right you can tell by the features all right the lips the nose right the egyptian information was brought to the romans of course via the greeks or who was known originally as the etruscans of the romans and the cretes or what is also known as the minoans of the um of the um, Grecian lands, as they refer to it as. Mm -hmm. 
All right? This is Victory of the Palm, second and third century dynasties of Roman marble, sarcophagus fragment also. Um, but once again, um, looks um, clearly melanated. All right? She looks clearly melanated, as you see here. Right, this is from the area of Antioch, of course, where Christianity got formed at. And of course, y'all can be the judge of that. What would y'all say? Or who would you say was those who also dwelt to Antioch? It's the second or third dynastic, um, second or third century AD. Right, this is head of the muse, head of the goddess of the muse. This is first century AD. Of course, the music short for the word music. All right. Here is a ah, Serapis. This is another statue of Serapis. Notice that, looking just like the Jesus mythology symbol in which a story in which that you've seen many, many times coming from Eurocentric um, interpretations from the Bible. This is a Roman marble um, Serapis statuette that circulated in the 2nd century AD. Now understand that this was during the time, 2nd century was during the time of 300. 100, during the 100, excuse me. So this was 200 years before the Nicene Council. 200 years before the Nicene Council, and they already had you with the Serapis statues. Now notice, this look just like Jesus with the, with the swaddling clothing on, <laughs> you know. If I didn't tell you that this was Serapis, you would say that this was Jesus. There's no way, there's, there's no denying that. Right, look, he got on the sandals, he got on the open toe Jesus sandals, as you always see. Now, this actually was a marble figure bringing up the divine goat, Amelthea. She was the nursing infant Zeus. All right, this is the first century AD. All right, she was nursing Zeus. This is actually, and of course, Zeus, as we just said, is the Serapis character, which becomes the Jesus character later on. All right. Just said, head of a man, Roman Imperial Julio um, Claudian, first century AD. See, we got to put all these pieces of this puzzle together. And you go to these art galleries and these museums, they have all these particular busts and all these particular um, images of various cultures in which that you can tell where the images and the information stems from. Just just can't get away from the king. Jesus. <laughs> Alright. Alright, that's that's what we got to show y'all for the day. And um Yo, we out, y'all.
Peace.